So on right. to the demo, feel free to participate because you guys, I'm sure, will enjoy this as well. <laughs> yes. So um, pretty much everybody is dealing with this right now. So definitely follow along. And if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute your mic and ask them. We are happy to answer as many questions as you may or may not have. And you can always reach us thereafter. Before I forget as well, um, I just want to remind you that we are, Unova is running a special on their, on the first virtual bodywork session that you get. Like if you book a virtual bodywork session for right now, I am the one who with a, a virtual bodywork schedule, Eileen will be picking some hours up, Somalia, who is another amazing colleague, um, and some other folks, uh, moving forward but for right now it's me i have hours on tuesdays and fridays in the evenings between five and eight. First virtual bodywork session you will receive 25 dollars off and that is good until august 25th so just a reminder on that for you and again if you have questions about it and you're not sure that you feel right about it please don't hesitate reach out to us and we can let you know if it will be appropriate for you and now let's take it away so the demo here is, we're assuming that Eileen, you've got some stress and tension in your neck and shoulder muscles, don't ya? I actually, I really do, like right here. <laughs> actually, really, <laughs> really, I do. Me too, so I'm kind of glad to be guiding you through this. In that right barrier scaling area. <laughs> oh boy. Well, one of the things that we can speak to about this work is that it can be helpful for you to do seated, lying down, even some of the work that I have um, choreographed, so to speak, ha has actually been standing and moving. So like a moving massage, which is one of the reasons why I really like to speak to the reproductive body work stuff as well. But that's for another Ask the LMT, if you will. But for today, um, so if you're seated, that's great. If you feel like you'd prefer to be lying down, you can do that as well. And we are going to be focusing, as I said, on neck and shoulder tension. So some things that you may or may not know, there are a ton of muscles in that area. Major muscles that might be affected are the suboccipitals, sub just like they sound underneath the occiput, which is the back of your neck. Okay. We have the trapezius muscle, which is a very long, thin muscle that goes from that suboccipital area down the neck, out to the shoulders, and down the back to just a little bit below the mid back area towards like right where the mid and lower back meet. You have levator scapula, which if you listen to how that sounds, levator scapula literally raises the scapulae. And the scapula are your big shoulder blades. Now, obviously we can't get all the way back here on our own, but as I had mentioned before, we can show you how to take a golf ball or a handball or a lacrosse ball or any different tennis ball, and we can show you how to work those in a fashion that will help to release muscle tension and allow your body to restore its proper range of motion in order to reduce pain and go about your day. Reduce pain, stress, all that kind of stuff. Additional muscles, as um, Eileen mentioned before, the scalene muscles, there are three on each side anterior, middle, and posterior scalenes. And they work in conjunction, or at least the anterior scalene muscle works in conjunction with the, that big honker over here, the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid. So it is real, like that's the easiest muscle you learn in massage school because it's literally telling you where it attaches. It attaches at the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process. And so this big muscle along with these guys, when you're sitting like this in front of your computer and you're sitting like this in front of your computer, those guys along with the pectoralis major and the rhomboid muscles that are on the back here, all of these muscles are out of whack and they're sitting on top of each other, causing them to be adhered to one another and not able to move appropriately. And that's when we wind up with headaches and neck tension and shoulder tension, and we feel bad, right? Eileen, you're feeling bad, I see it. Mm -hmm. And side note, drink lots of water so that they don't adhere. Absolutely, drinking enough water is very helpful to allow the muscles to keep fluid um, and do their job and move appropriately. But 
here we are. And so how I'm going to walk Eileen through this is first and foremost, I'm going to make sure that she's sitting up and has her shoulders rolled back. Okay. So you're going to sit up and make sure that your shoulders are rolled back and you're going to take a nice deep breath in first, just a nice deep breath in, not only into your chest, but all the way into your belly. You can put your hands on your belly and on your chest to see where you are breathing so that you understand how best to breathe. So deep inhale and expand your belly and then also expand your chest. And then when you exhale, make sure to really deflate it as if you're deflating a balloon. Okay. If you're seated, if you're seated, it will feel differently than when you are laying down, but either way you want to make sure you're really filling your belly as well as your chest, but the belly first, then the chest, then the chest, and then the belly. So like you're really moving through a full breath and you might do that two, three, four times, five times, three to five is my favorite kind of point because then you're really settling into your breath. And then we're going to talk about where Eileen's, you know, major issues are. So Eileen, if you can point to me where the most uh, problematic area is, that would be great. So like this area right behind the ear, mm -hmm. right before I get to that, so right in front of the trap. Okay. So we're, she's talking like the top of her shoulder and right behind the ear here. So one thing that I would have her do is what I call a, a strip and stretch. Okay. What does that mean? Again, there are a bunch of muscles all connecting in this area. So stripping and stretching is literally putting certain muscles on the stretch. So anything that goes on what we call the slack in this way is gonna be nice and loose, right? But then when we go the other way, when we bring our opposite ear to the opposite shoulder, we are stretching some muscles. So I might have her do a strip and stretch with her hand at the top of the muscle. So she was pointing to that mastoid process back here. So I might have her hold here and then bring the opposite ear to the opposite shoulder. Now, there is often a rotation that we need to account for as well in a lot of these muscles. So for example, let's go with that SEM, that big muscle that we talked about in the front. I will do this for myself sometimes on the subway. And it's good because it helps keep people away from you too. You wind up with two seats around you, you got a lot of room. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna bring this back so you can hopefully see me a little bit better. You're gonna look down to the opposite side. So if I'm working on my left SCM, I'm looking down at the floor past my right leg. And just your head, you're not bending too far forward, but just the head. And so you'll see that you can really grab onto that big muscle in the front portion of your neck, okay? And so I'm gonna try and grab up as high as possible. And then I'm going to turn my head up and over my left shoulder. So I'm looking down to the right. I have my right hand on my left SCM and I'm grabbing and holding it as I turn up to the left, okay? We're gonna do that three more times. Nice and slow. And you're bringing your hand down towards the sternum. So I'm literally rotating, grasping, and stretching to help alleviate some of the tension in that muscle. How does that feel to you, Eileen? Good. I actually felt my neck address. <laughs> See? So a lot of times the, the skeleton portion of musculoskeletal, skeletal, the, the, the actual <laughs> bones will move once you relieve some of that soft tissue, the musculature. So, and this is something that you can do rather easily. As I said, we guide you through it. Now, some of the other things that might be causing this forward head tilt or 
just tension in this portion of the neck might be coming not necessarily from the back of the neck, but from this anterior portion of the chest. Because these muscles are short and tight, the muscles in the back are overstretched. How do we work that? Well, as we were talking about before, you have your sternum right here, that hard bone right in the center. And then if you feel the edges of it, you'll feel, wait, there are these little bumps and movement here. What is, uh, uh, this is how your ribs attach. And in between the ribs, intercostal spaces, yet the musculature is on top of that. So we have this big muscle called pectoralis major, and then there's a little one under here as well, pectoralis minor. But the major one is big, big like slab of meat. And so one of the things that we can do is help to stretch this out and move this so that your shoulder, your neck can all go back into its right place. And these muscles tend not to be overstretched, not be sitting on one another anymore, and you're able to function properly. So another thing that I would go through with Eileen in this session would be find each of those intercostal spaces and we're going to take the fingers together in a group and keep them slightly bent. You might keep your thumb underneath for a good support, or you might put the um, portion of your hand over here against your chest so that you're moving over this area because you want as much pressure as you can with this. And again, you can bring your shoulder back while you do it to further stretch that out. So again, another strip and stretch, so to speak. But you're really going from the sternum out to the shoulder and moving through those intercostal spaces in order to open the chest and reduce some of the tension that has shortened these muscles here. Another way you can do it is pulling this way and also grabbing the muscle over here and moving the arm, another strip and stretch. So almost a pin and stretch too, because I'm pinning the muscle with my fingers in my armpit. Thank God I shaved my underarms. <laughs> right in there. Right in there, grab that. Put your thumb right in the middle of the muscle here, wherever it feels tense, maybe sore. Find that spot, move your shoulder all the way back. And you can let the muscle fall between your fingers, almost like you're plucking it, like you're plucking a guitar string. Also helps to alleviate some of the tension in that muscle. How does that feel? Good. Great. Definitely a lot better. Excellent. And so then one of the other things that I like to remind patients to do, because sometimes you'll forget to do all the things. I always give a, if you don't remember anything, if you remember one thing, here's the thing I want you to remember. And I'm going to really kind of give you two before we wrap it up. So cupping your hand and doing some percussion. When in doubt, if you feel like I can't really get in there, it doesn't feel really good to me, I can only do it when I'm on the phone with you, blah, 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 all of those kinds of things, that's fine. Cup your hand a little bit and go down the arm. I generally tell people do both sides, make sure your hand is cupped because when it's cupped, you're not just smacking yourself because that isn't at all comfortable. But this is gonna help Keep your wrists nice and relaxed and go down the channels and down to help alleviate some of that tension. Because remember, the idea is that we're mostly like this. So we want to do the opposite. The other thing I remind them to do, take a nice deep inhale. Bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Really crunch them up there. Breathe in, exhale, and drop them. Right, excellent job, everybody, like you mean it. If you just go like this, you're not really getting the full effect of just kind of shaking off that you know, bit of stuck energy. So again, I usually say three to five times. Deep inhale, drop. One more time. Deep inhale and drop. Good, roll the shoulders back. Roll them forward, 
tilt the head to the side. You might notice that some of the prickly cracklies happen. Do everything nice and slow. And then come to a regular seat and we close it out with another breath. Three to five breaths, one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, and really breathe fully into your body. That is now a little bit different than it was before we did this exercise, right? You might notice when you breathe in, you feel things in a different space. You might feel like the tension that was across your whole back is now only in one little last bit that we still need to work out in the next session. Stuff like that. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. And how does everybody feel? Thank you. My pleasure.